So welcome back for those who were already connected this morning for the uh, sessions on understanding the standardization process. I hope you enjoyed a ni nice lunch break because this afternoon we have again a well-packed agenda. The uh, housekeeping rules are uh, exactly the same. So I'm moderating this webinar today, uh, apart from my hair being a bit longer than on the picture, I'm still the same person. Um, as you know, we organize this event for the first time online. Uh, we focus our uh, presentations on, um, or they are dedicated to the newly appointed technical bo body officers at Sen and Senelec. But at the same time, we decided to open them to everybody who is interested in the topic and who wants to know more about uh, standardization. So this afternoon, we will discuss first the Senelec IT tools uh, at two o'clock now. And at three, we continue with the Senelec, uh, Sen, sorry, IT tools. Um, so my name is Elsa. I will be moderating the webinar and the questions that come in. Uh, I would like to inform you that you're all muted during the presentation, but as usual, you can use the Q&A panel for entering your questions. Um, we will go through this session through a few of the IT tools, so I suggest that we take regular breaks to uh, handle a few of your questions. Should your question remain unreplied, please don't uh, worry about that because we will create a Q&A file with all the questions and answers that we will uh, upload on the website later on. This presentation is also recorded, so we'll, we will make it available uh, to you later on and we will share the presentation with you. You will find it in your inbox by tomorrow evening at the latest. Uh, please also bear in mind that we will continue with the SEND session uh, at three o'clock, so we need to uh, close down this session five minutes before, so the timing is really quite strict. So before we take off, I would like to launch, uh, well, maybe first of all, present my colleagues who are very knowledgeable um, if it concerns all the IT tools. So from left to right, we have Anna, Elisa, Eric and Melanie, who will be guiding you through the different IT tools. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to know from you, uh, how is your mood today? So uh, let me open a poll for you so that we hopefully can get you engaged. So are you feeling excited about this presentation? Happy, motivated to learn more? Or are you, are you hopeful to uh, get to know more about this? Just go ahead and then after a few seconds, we will close the poll. Okay, thanks a lot. Let me share the results with you. Uh, happy to see that most of the people are motivated and of course in a good mood. So let's go for it. I have one more slide to, or sorry, poll to share with you because uh, as I said, we dedicate this session to newly appointed uh, technical body officers, but uh, we would like to know from you if you are already a bit familiar with the IT tools. So please let us know what is your experience with Senelec IT tools? Are you using it frequently or did you never hear about it? And I would say that even for the newcomers, it's of course a very good basic uh, to learn about the IT tools. And even if you're a frequent user, these uh, sessions can help you to become more acquainted and to learn more or refresh your mind about certain things that you might have forgotten in the meantime. So good, perfect. I think it's a bit balanced. We have some frequent users, but also a few that never used it before. So without further ado, I would like to, let me share the results first and you see them as well. Without um, continuing my speech, because I've been talking enough, I think I would like to go on with the presentation and share with you the agenda. So please, Anna, can I ask you to share your screen from your side so that we can see the agenda and that we can start with the presentation of the different tools? Yes. Um, okay. So. Okay. Um, hello and uh, good afternoon. My name is Anna Gaugela and I'm a project manager at CCMC in the IT department. And um, I will start today's um, presentation of the IT tools. And I saw that there's a lot of motivated people and some of the newcomers. So I hope it's gonna be interesting. 
And uh, let me um, tell you what the agenda is today. So the first one is the, I will talk a bit about the collaboration platform, then the committee internal voting tool, projects online, um, a few words on Zoom, quick search. And the last point is um, the forthcoming evolution, what's happening or what is in the pipeline. Um, let me start with the collaboration platform. So I assume uh, since most of you already are using the tools, people are aware of what the collaboration platform is, but um, for those who don't know it yet, um, I would like to give a short introduction um, to just show you, okay, what is the tool and where can you find additional more use or useful information on how to elaborate on um, working with the collaboration platform. Um, so how to access the platform? It's, there's a direct link here, collaborate.iec.ch, uh, um, or you can also go via the Senelec homepage in the tools section. And um, then there is a login. So it's a single sign on, which means that um, you can use your email address and your password, which is registered in the IEC expert management system. So, um, and everything depends, uh, or your access permissions and your viewing rights will um, depend on the access that you have in the expert management system. Um, who can have access to the collaboration platform is um, technical body offices, observers, affiliates, partners, and uh, Euro Euro uh, European Commission, for example, but also national committees, um, national experts. Then, um, there are different accesses. So the different access groups are the editors, authors, or readers. Editors are, they have full right accesses. Um, these are officers and CCMC staff. And officers are conveners, secretaries, chairmen, and um, yeah. And this full right access, they can create folders. They can upload documents and they can move or delete all folders or documents. The second access group is the author, which have limited right access. This is a national committee officials, members and observers. They can create a folder, they can upload documents, but they can only delete their own folders or documents. And then the third one is the reader, which already says it, it has reading access only. And this is for national participants. So um, there is some more information and videos and explanation can be found on the IEC website. And here you can see then the IEC Academy. And there, there is a list or a whole a portfolio of webinars um, from um, uh, more recent ones, but also older ones. And there you can always watch them and get more information on it. And I would suggest for a newcomer, it's very interesting, the, an, an older one from 2018. It was the introduction of the collaboration platform. This is a user guide for um, or a training for all users. And then 2019, there is an update on the collaboration platform, which is also a an interesting webinar to see, okay, what has changed. And of course, also on the Senelec website or on the CCMC website, there is information. And we also have, we also provide you with, uh, with a webinar and the training session. And for everyone who's already familiar with the collaboration platform, there's also an interesting part um, in the, on, the, on, the, on the system where you see uh, there is a part which is the I for information. And there you can access um, the user guide. You have, you find answers to frequently asked questions and you find all the release notes. So for every release, um, there is a release note and it explains um, what kind of improvements were done, what are the new features and um, give uh, a bit of more detail. And um, 
now I have a few uh, or three features that I want to um, share with you that are some more, like there are new releases. And the first one is the versioning. It's the upload of a new version of a document without, um, without eliminating the previous version. So the previous version remains in the system. Um, there's also a summary of changes and an author can um, upload a new version even if he's not the owner of the original document. The second feature is the document move. Very handy also, um, editors can move documents between different workspaces. And the third one is a custom distribution list. So it already says uh, what it is. It's cut to customize a distribution list and it also can be shared among other members. Um, so this was the, the part on the collaboration platform. And if you have questions, please uh, use the question answer um, tool. And otherwise I'm gonna head hand over to my colleague who's gonna continue with the committal internal voting. Okay, thank you, Anna. If you could just can go through the, yeah, the, the so I will present the, the, the um, uh, committee internal voting platform. Um, so Anna, please, if you go, can go just onto the next slide, thank you. Um, so the CIV, so committee internal voting is something for those who know it's similar to the CIB. If you don't know it, well, you will get to know it into the next session with the SEND IT tools. And it's a platform where um, technical committees can create questionnaires, survey, and those kind of things um, whenever they need them. So it has a small flow of a ballot creation. It's got a notification system. Uh, people can access um, and, and do consultations, they can vote, uh, and then there's the reminders and um, a closure of the vote with the compilation of, of the results, like automatic compilations um, available for um, the TC secretary. So your logging and password will be the same as your uh, IC Senelec national it's, uh, um, password. Access is given um, by default the vote owner have an access if they have a role in EMS as a TC secretary, an assistant secretary, BTTF conveners. Uh, national committees give access to the people who can vote, so the representatives of the Senelec national committees, and CCMC will only give access to people who can comment, so that means partners, um, external liaison organization, or even the consultant if, if one of them would need, would need an access. Anna, if you can go on to the next one, please. Um, so you have a direct link to access the platform, um, but it is also it can also be accessed from the Senelec homepage, which is obviously the easiest way. You just connect to the website and it's on the right hand side. You've got your little toolbox with all the interesting accesses. Uh, there's also a user guide, which is quite detailed. Uh, available on the on the Senelec website. Uh, if you go to the member and experts resource area manuals, uh, it's there, and you can have a read. It's 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 detailed, so it might um, look a little bit boring at the beginning, but it will help you a lot uh, with the tool. Um, now I will um, take the uh, uh, share screen, and I will guide you through um, a short um, demonstration of the tool is gonna to be very quick. Uh, so I have it open here. It is the test area and I have full access admin rights. So obviously I don't have really the same access as you have. So normally you would only have um, access for your own TCs, but if, if you are a TC secretary, if you have the, the, the right to create um, a ballot, then you just have simply an add button here. So that's quite um, easy to handle and then you have only um, your own TCs. If you have several, you're going to have a small drop down list with several. But then uh, it's really, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite easy to handle if you have only a, a, a small um, a number of TCs. So some fields are mandatory, so they're, they're marked with a little red star. Uh, you can not attach a document, but you can give a hyperlink so you can take the hyperlink. Um, from the collaboration platform 
which is accessible for everyone. Um, for example, you can just put your link here. And then there's just a little point for attention here because we've realized uh, people sometimes struggle with this one. Um, when you create your ballot, by default, it is today's date. Um, if you do not change the date in the future, uh, there will be a problem that you cannot configure the questionnaires because your vote cannot be modified if it's on, basically. If people are voting, you cannot really um, modify the questionnaire. It wouldn't be fair for people having voted already. Uh, so you need to set it in the future so that you can uh, you can um, configure the questionnaire. So you just need to, to go on to the next day or a couple of days after. Uh, be careful that if it's just the next day, there might be a couple of days um, ha happening before people receive the notifications. Uh, be careful as well that you are free for the length of the questionnaire or the inquiry you want to make. If it's very, very short, uh, people won't get any reminders or any notifications because it's too short for the system to, 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 to send, to launch those. You can add a note and you can um, choose if you want to have online comments or if you want a file attachment. So when you save, what well, really easy, then once it's saved, you have the configured questionnaire. And then you can just go and choose. You can see here your hyperlink is uh, available and you can just go and create your questionnaire um, for which you can you have different type of answers. So you can have a yes, no, abstain, you can have an against or you can have in favor and you can have as well a free response, which is then you don't decide for a free response. It's just like a blank field that people can uh, fill in. It's not um, short, but it's no more than an A4 format page. So people cannot go and write pages and pages in that field. So bear in mind that um, it's not for um, um, writing a whole story. Well, if you choose the yes, no, for example, type of questionnaire and abstain, um, you can choose if the comments are optional, not allowed, or if they are required. So people are kind of blocked. They cannot do um, differently than what you have, uh, what you have chosen. So when you save, also um, one point that uh, popped up before uh, during the last year, um, it is a questionnaire. So you have to have at least one question or um, participant will not have access to, to anything to vote. You can't just use it to just to um, ask people to post comments and not answer a question. That's not going to be, um, the system is not going to allow it to, you to do that. So once this is done, let's say that we are the next day um, and then the, 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 the ballot is open and then you have your ballot here for TC66X that's open and then people can go and vote. So as a vote owner, you would have the same access as I have. So be careful uh, when you click that you may vote for another country, which is not really what you want to do sometimes. But if it's needed, then you can. So it's indicating if the comments is optional or not what people choose something. And then when people reply, you've got um, on top of the automatic compilation uh, at the end of the process, uh, we have some nice feature, which is showing you um, if people have um, voted, who has voted or not. So you can see here one answered, 33 did not answer yes. And then you can see what country have not answered already. If you're really searching to have an answer from everyone and you want to, 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 to con get in touch with them and ask them to, to reply. And well, basically that is it for the demonstration. Uh, so you can see that it's really um, a tool that is really easy um, to use. It's, it's not so complicated. I mean, it's just really creating your questionnaire and your questions. Um, and uh, regarding the, the how you have to use it and how you can use it and, and, and how it should be used, that is something that you can um, uh, ask uh, colleagues uh, in charge of the, the technical board matters. So I think they have some guidance uh, as to how to use it and when to use it for you. So this is just here, just showing how um, it is used, basically how, where to click to create your questionnaire.
so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Uh, Anna, you can um, come back to the presentation, please. Yeah, so we can go on to the next. Yeah, so just for a quick summary, it's really easy. You've got a NAT button with your personal list of uh, committees. Um, then on to the next one. You need to fill in some metadata, some are mandatory, some are not. Be careful to when you start your vote and the length of your vote if you want to enjoy the reminder system. Uh, and you have to create a question. It is a questionnaire. Basically, the tool is a bit puzzled if you don't have a question and it's not working properly. So users do not have access. Um, yes, and then when it's finished, when it's closed, uh, you can just download. You can see there's a little zip file that you can get the result uh, from. This closed tab is only allowed to people with the vote owner role, so no one else can go uh, and check. Obviously, the view is also for my own profile, so I can see everything, but you can see only your own theses. Yeah, then we can go on to the next and we can see so the notification system. So there's one for the opening of the vote. There's one at four weeks and one week before the deadline, if your um, survey is long enough. It doesn't have to be, but just if it's not that length, then you cannot enjoy the notification. And there's one at the closure of the vote, and they look like the usual uh, Senelec notification uh, that you will have from our systems. And yeah, for the Senelec CIV, that's it. So if you have any question, please um, go on. We will uh, reply as best as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. I will continue with uh, the projects online application. So please, Anna, if you can go to the next. Thank you. Uh, so we made available for you um, recorded training. So just to summarize what uh, projects online is, um, it is a web application that is restricted to authorized users only, where you can consult um, the work program of your of uh, all SEN and SENELEC technical bodies. Uh, so you may access it uh, using the, the direct link, or again, it is also available on the SENELEC website via the section uh, tool and services. Okay. Um, in addition to uh, the recorded webinar that we put online, I would like just to um, present you a main feature that is interesting for you as a TB officer. It's uh, the alert system. Uh, you may have noticed that sometimes there is a little alert icon uh, that appears next to uh, one of your uh, work item. It means that uh, there is a specific action uh, that is expected from uh, the technical committee. Um, so if you go to the next slide, please. So if you want to get more information about uh, that alert, uh, you can mouse over the alert icon. It will uh, show you what kind of alert it is. And if you click on the icon, it will open a, a page giving you more information about um, on the meaning of this uh, of this alert and what kind of action is uh, expected from your from your site. <clears throat> Okay, um, yes, a little information that I would like to share with you. It's uh, since the 5th of October, the access to projects online has been extended to the SEN and SENELEC experts. So now uh, the access to the tool is based on the role in the expert management system. And I put it a list of uh, the roles that give access to the tool. Uh, so now from now on, we uh, encourage uh, users to log in by using the preferred login. So you can use uh, your account from the expert management system instead of the one uh, received, received from uh, CCMC. You may still use that uh, local Sensenelec account via the option alternative login, but 
please bear in mind that uh, this option will be removed in Q1 uh, next year. Okay, this is all I wanted to, sh to say about the projects online. Okay, thank you. So um, now I'm back with um, a short um, yeah, introduction to Zoom. So at the beginning and over the course of the pandemic, I think a lot of people heard about Zoom or another web conference tool, but this was the time um, when also uh, we had CSCMC implemented the tool uh, Zoom, the web conference tool, which uh, we provide a personal account with unlimited time in um, yeah, conference minutes. And uh, it gives access to um, all kinds of web conference facilities. You can find information on the San Senelec homepage. And I also provide here a link. And uh, you can request an, um, an account via, with, uh, via email to webconf at sensenelec.eu. Um, the information that uh, we need is your name, the email address, the organization, uh, the reference of the TC and your role. And if there is already an existing Zoom account. Um, the eligibility or the eligible roles are um, listed here. So active secretaries, conveners, assistants and support teams, active chairpersons and their support teams. And currently we're discussing if we also open it up for project team leaders, but this is not decided yet. Um, we also uh, encountered often um, some restrictions from um, companies or, or organizations. And there our approach is um, we are recommending and supporting Zoom, but of course it's not mandatory. If you have alternative ways of uh, doing a conference uh, call, use it of course or there's also alternative ways of joining a zoom meeting so um, you can dial in with your phone you can have the zoom mobile application the web client or even skype for business um, and the main features uh, are of course um, having or organizing meetings with video and audio um, then you can host meetings or you can schedule meetings on behalf of someone else. You can have a conference of up to 500 participants. You can do recording. You can screen, uh, share your screen. You can use a meeting chat uh, or also some so-called breakout rooms. This is parallel rooms where you can gather in smaller groups. And uh, it is a nice, um, another nice feature is the like nonverbal feedback, like raising your hand, uh, giving a thumbs up, or as you've seen already before, there is a possibility to conduct a survey or to ask questions. And um, some more information and also support uh, is on our website. There is um, a, a specific part only for Zoom. And then there is also a, small, a quick help and a quick guide with the main functionalities. And of course, um, you can always write an email to webconf at senselec.eu. Thank you very much. Okay, it's me again. I will continue with the quick search and this time I will share my screen because I will give you an online demo. Okay. So about quick search, um, it is a web application that is also a uh, uh, protected by a username and password, uh, which give you the possibility to search in an easy and a direct way on uh, SEN and SENELEC BT decisions, on SEN and SENELEC standardization work, and on SEN and SENELEC technical bodies. So you can access this tool uh, via the direct link, and the, it is also uh, accessible via the Senelec website in our uh, little toolbox. 
um, all projects online users are allowed to consult uh, the standardization work and the technical bodies information. Now, uh, regarding the consultation of BT decision, currently only the SEN BT members and the SENELEC permanent delegates, delegates are allowed uh, to access them. But um, next year, we will extend uh, this access to the SEN and SENELEC TC and subcommittee secretaries and chairs. This is time for the demo. So this is the home page of the tool. What you just need to do is to enter a um, keyword um, in the search bar. Okay, it will give you some results and you can filter here on the left side by choosing a category. Let's take body for example. Here again, um, you have more, more uh, filters appearing. Um, let's say that I'm only interested in active bodies. And if I click on one of those, it will redirect me to uh, the technical body page on projects online. So if I come back, then I can just remove my filters by clicking on the little cross. Now I um, would like only to have standards dealing with this topic. <clears throat> so maybe I can apply some more filters. For example, let's take a mandate or standardization request. Let's say that I'm only interested in published standards. Here again, if I click on it, I will be redirected to the uh, page of that work item on projects online. Now, regarding uh, the decisions, it's a little bit different. So I will just remove my filters and take the category decision. Here again, I can apply some more filters. Let's take Senelec. BT, I'm interested only in adopted decision from taken this year, for example. Here we go. I will now click on one of these decision. It will open a new tab where you can find uh, information about the decision for example, the decision date, uh, the date that decision is applicable. Um, you have also a direct link to uh, related BT documents and the text of the BT decision. Okay. And this is everything I wanted to say about the quick search. So now I, and I give the floor to my colleague Eric for the next um, slides. <clears throat> yeah. So good afternoon. So maybe just to give some hints of what is coming next. And okay, you can move to to next slide. So um, first, there are a few projects in the pipe pipeline. The first one is uh, the websites. So we are revamping uh, the websites. And so, especially on the on the Senelec side, uh, for the time being, we have a website where we try to address uh, the public, but also the experts. And at the end of the day, we have a website which is sometimes too complex for the public, but also not providing uh, all the details or, uh, I would say, um, gathering all the information which are relevant for for the experts. So um, we will revamp the website. We have a send select website which will be much more public focused. And then to have an expert an experts portal page, Senelec experts portal page, where uh, all the, the experts, the Senelec experts will find uh, all the link to the relevant uh, applications that they have to use, but also to hold the different, uh, I would say related information, users guides and, uh, and other uh, information material. 
So, and this new these new websites will be launched uh, uh, in June next year. The next one is the select meeting registration system. <clears throat> so, for the time being, the registration to meeting uh, in select is still uh, based on email. And so we have a plan already uh, with this plan already a, for a long time ago uh, to develop a meeting registration system. But of course, um, it makes sense that we develop such tool in synergy with IEC so that we don't develop our own solution, but uh, have a solution which is harmonized between uh, Senelec and IEC uh, for the experts. And so hopefully uh, IEC and Senelec will start to work on this uh, next year. And so the idea is to provide the opportunity to the TC secretaries to uh, create uh, the meeting with an online tool. And of course, for the members to register online and okay, have some features like generating automatically the, uh, the, the list of uh, registered people from the application, uh, have a link to the, to directly to the, to the agenda or to the web conferencing when there is a web conferencing which was uh, created. And the last but not least is the online collaborative uh, authoring. So um, that's a project which is uh, ongoing. So, so far uh, we have already onboarded uh, two Senelec uh, working groups uh, for the pilot phase. And so the, the objectives of this, these projects um, are the following. First, uh, if you look at the way uh, the work is done in the, in the work, especially in the working groups for the time being, uh, it's not at all a collaborative way of working. It's very much based on Microsoft Word, where you have a, a, an editor, usually a project leader or the working group convener, uh, with, uh, I would say, maintaining the document and then is uh, including in this document the comments he received from the different uh, members of the working group or uh, of the or the or the other uh, people contributing. And so um, the idea here is really to move to a real online collaborative authoring environment, where you can have several person being able to author the same documents. Of course, there is all, always one person, the project leader or the working group convener, uh, who can be, behave as a moderator and accept or reject the changes which are made. Uh, the second also important aspect is to try to um, enforce from the very beginning the um, drafting rules. Uh, now that's a process which is more uh, made at the end when it's coming into the, the ends of CCMC to check the documents, the Word documents and uh, then to see if it's in line with internal regulations and, uh, and the drafting rules. Now we want to try to not only enforce the drafting rules properly from the very beginning, but also to offer uh, some interesting features, like if you want to uh, add in a document um, normative reference, instead of having to guess exactly what is the normative reference and the title, uh, when you will type the normative reference, uh, there is a lookup which is done automatically into the Senelec database and then the system will automatically propose you the list of standards that you can uh, insert as, uh, as normative reference. Um, and then also uh, maybe the third uh, objective and maybe it's not the least, um, you probably know that XML is becoming uh, a format which is more and more important as um, uh, format for the, 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 the standards content. And um, especially our members uh, are using uh, standards in XML format to provide more and more added value services to their hand customers. Uh, and also you now we are talking more and more about machine readable files, which means that we are developing uh, standards uh, which are not meant to be read by person, but which are meant to be directly digested by, by a system. And so of course, <clears throat> XML is really the, the cornerstone of all these services and this evolution. And so it's very important that we are able to create, I would say a proper, a clean XML from the very beginning. And here uh, with the online collaborative uh, authoring solution, uh, all the content of the standards is saved as uh, an XML uh, file at the background. So that's, uh, I think, the main objectives. And okay, maybe you can move to next slide. 
And so, as I said, looking at the process, we have started with uh, two pilots here in November. And we see three main steps. The first one is to provide a tool for the authoring and commenting. So that's mainly the work that will take place at working group level. The step two is to handle the commenting. So the purpose is to um, integrate, uh, for instance, the inquiry uh, procedure with uh, this tool so that when you submit your comment, it's not received as a Word file, uh, because if it is the case, we would lose a little bit the, <laughs> all the advantages of the tool, but really also to integrate the, the way uh, the members are uh, providing their comments during the inquiry directly into the, this online collaborative authoring, which offer much more, I would say, um, advanced features and easy features for the TC secretaries to manage the, the comments received. And so that's foreseen for, for June next year. And then the last step is the internal editing. It's to also develop all the necessary tool for CCMC to, to do the final editing of the, of the document, which should be available uh, somewhere in September uh, 2022. And what is important also to say is that um, this is a process that we want to be fully iterative with the technical committee. So we will start to onboard more and more groups into this uh, into this platform. Uh, and we have started with an MVP, so what we call a minimum viable product. And the, this idea, the idea is really to collect their feedback and to develop the tool based on this feedback so that uh, we have a tool which is really developed uh, for the experts and also uh, with the experts, but that we don't assume what they would need, but that's really what they, they, they what will fit their, their expectations. And so hopefully we should be able to uh, start the full deployment of the tool uh, to all the committees in 2023. So thank you, I've finished for my part. And so if you have any 